Hello everyone. This is a playthrough of Claire B in Resident Evil 2 Remake on Hardcore mode. No damage with an S plus rank. Uh, it took me a little bit longer than I thought to get around to recording this. Well, the commentary track, not the actual playthrough. Uh, because I actually thought about just re-recording this run. I determined that it wasn't really necessary because I already plan on doing no save, no damage, and I don't really have any free time right now. Um, Leon, but sure this, you guys are in for a treat <laughs> because this recording is extremely rough. There's a number of very stupid mistakes that I made during this run um, that I didn't make in previous practice runs where I also got no damage, but I didn't record the practice runs, because I always do the practice runs and then record a main run. Um, and I'm not sure why I made the mistakes that I did, but regardless, uh, the beginning is the same as always with the B scenarios. You run up and grab the bolt cutters, and then right after the cutscene, we hold immediately to the right and mash sprint, uh, so that the police officer zombie immediately ahead of us and the female zombie near the gateway do not grab us when we're trying to run past. Now, I have no fucking clue why I was headed back to where we spawned here. This is the bad omen that the run is going to be, uh, absolute trash. But we're gonna open up this door with the bolt cutters. Grab, uh, Claire's 45. Store away the SLS. So grab the hand grenade on the radiator. Grab the key for the courtyard. And grab the 45 ACP rounds. Uh, Claire gets the quick action army as her 45 caliber handgun. It uh, fires very, very quickly but take and is very, very powerful, but takes very, very, very long to reload. Um, so you gotta be really careful when using it. For those zombies there, you're just gonna try your best to use leg stuns and the frag grenade we just picked up in order to get past them. Um, they are in a lot of different positions, they're very RNG, so there's no set path I can tell you will work. My advice is just to look for stray zombies, get leg stuns to go past them, and then hit the group with the frag and run past. Uh, we're gonna grab the handgun rounds way back there off that barrel, and then we're gonna come up to the art room from the stairs to get the weapons key card early, because you get it early in B scenario. Um, then we're gonna come around this corner very carefully, and we need to stun both of these zombies to get by. Now, as Leon, I normally take the leg off of one of the zombies, uh, in case they're grouped up together. But as Claire, you don't really have to, because her handgun is actually stronger than Leon's. It does more damage, and it has a lot more stun. Plus, it rapid fires. So, usually if you do one focus shot to the, a zombie's leg, um, it will stun them. And if not, you can rapid fire two shots into their leg, and it should stun them. We're going to sneak our way around Elliot by sticking to the right, and then grab the knife that was in the wall next to the fuse back there. Come down the hall and grab the incendiary rounds in front of the save room. And then come in this locker, grab handgun rounds. There's a white gunpowder in this locker, and there's a fuse right here that we need to get out. We're ignoring the machine gun rounds, because while you could get the machine gun to make this safer, which I'll probably elaborate on later down the line, uh, we're not going to be getting the machine gun in order to save time. Uh, we're going to leave the box room with three slots. You want to keep the uh, bolt cutters, the fuse, your handgun, and your handgun rounds. Uh, and then we're just going to come out here and try to get Elliot to turn to one side so we can run around his backside while he's crawling around. Oh, and we also want the weapons key card uh, as well. Just keep three slots in your inventory. Um... We're going to grab a flash grenade in here on the table, and then uh, you're supposed to very quickly grab the handgun rounds on this zombie's corpse, but I kept hitting the window by accident, which wasted time. Uh, you're going to try to gra come in here and grab the valve and the white gunpowder before this zombie cuts you off. If he cuts you off, just try to leg stun him. Then we're going to take a right out this door rather than a left towards the fuse breaker because we're going to come into this little room and grab more handgun rounds and go into the presentation room and grab even more. We need a lot of handgun rounds for the B scenario, because in B scenario, one of the differences from A is uh, there are a lot more zombies in RPD-1 to take care of uh, in order to do it safely. 
So we're going to turn around after getting the handgun rounds. Again, zombies in your way. Leg pop them. Just run by. We're going to pop the fuse in. And then we've got our first area where we need to eliminate some zombies. Uh, because there'll be trouble later if we don't. So you're going to run out here. And we're going to take out the three zombies in this room. Uh, the first is this guy. He, they can be in different positions. But we need to take care of this guy first. Uh... And basically, you're just going to go for focused headshots, and then back off whenever you need to reload, because as you can see, Claire takes a very long time to reload bullet by bullet. It actually takes even longer than the SLS does, bullet by bullet. And we need to make sure they're dead, so go ahead and check them after they've died. They should have to die twice in hardcore, unless you get a critical headshot, and their head gets popped. I missed a shot there. Two shots. That is absolutely terrible. And again, a bad omen for this run. Missing shots like that. We need to try to make our handgun rounds in this early segment of the game count. Uh, especially as Claire. Because with my route that I'm showing, Claire is going to be tight on ammo. At least on handgun rounds. You need to kind of be tight with your handgun rounds. Um, then we're going to kill this female zombie after Marvin. I missed another shot there. That's just great. Then I think I almost get grabbed here because she was alive. Calculated risk, but I shouldn't have taken it in the first place. I just wanted to make sure I hit her head. Try to save on bullets. And then I don't think she's actually dead. Reload shot by shot. She is not dead. This is why you check them, make sure they die. Now she's dead. Uh, we're just gonna do the, uh, I think I was supposed to do the lion puzzle early here. Oh, I'm grabbing these handgun rounds first. You can run down this side of the main hall. I recommend getting these now, even though it's a minor time waste, because you're not gonna be able to get them later, uh, as Mr. X is gonna be on our ass, and that's a dead end. Um, so unless you want to risk taking a haymaker to the face, I recommend grabbing those handgun rounds now, because Claire will need them. And then we're gonna solve the lion puzzle early, um... The solution in the B scenario, as it changes from A, is crown, brazier, dove. And we're going to go ahead and just slap that downstairs as well. Minor time waste uh, from the Leon B route, but we need uh, more inventory slots with Claire uh, open to do this safely. Um, she has a little bit of a different path she needs to take. I was a little bit confuzzled where I was going. We're going to the West Hall now, in here. There's some handgun rounds on the couch there. Uh, and we're going to head into the West Hall and then walk, because a liquor is in here, in the B scenario. Uh, so we don't want to aggro him. We don't have to worry about zombies coming through these windows to the left, like we do in Leon B because Claire does not need to come back in this hallway if you've been through here the one time with the bolt cutters. So we can just ignore it for the rest of the game. Once you get about to these wooden planks against the wall, you can run because the liquor is so far down the hall he can't hear you. And there's handgun rounds in this room to the left. Then we're gonna come over here to the bolt cutter door because we got the bolt cutters early. We don't have to drop through the window, we can just cut this off, immediately come in here and get the detonator, the electronic device that becomes the detonator, and uh, we're going to throw away the bolt cutters and grab another flashbang off that chair right there. Next we're going to bank left, and there is handgun rounds on this body, and we're going to go ahead and get rid of this zombie that's banging on the vending machine, and I got a lucky head pop there. Um... Next, we're going in the west office, grabbing this blue gunpowder, not the note, but whatever. Uh, combining it with the white from earlier to make some acid rounds, as we're going to need a lot of those. And I was uh, looking at my inventory here, wondering what was going on with it. I think I was a bit, like, I got a bit confused about my inventory, but we're actually fine. We're going to open that locker next to the JoJo locker for more handgun rounds, and then we're going to open the West Office safe. The combination is 9 15 7, and that's going to give us a side pack. The only inventory upgrade that we're getting uh, in any of these runs, because it saves time. It's the only one that's convenient, and it's really the only one we need. Next, we're going to run back across to the armory, and we're going to type 109 into the keypad in order to get more handgun rounds. We're going to grab those on our way to put the keycard in the, uh, I don't know why I didn't grab them first, but same difference. We're going to put the keycard into this locker here at the end of the hall and get the grenade launcher. Go ahead and load the shell in. I don't know why I still haven't oh, no. gotten these handgun rounds. 
we're gonna go ahead and break this zombie's leg off. Uh, he died early here from leg shots, and I just decided to keep shooting at his leg to break it off. Because he isn't really dead, uh, he just got his first death in hardcore and they died twice. And I absolutely forgot to grab those handgun rounds. I didn't even realize that I did that in this one. Uh, don't forget those handgun rounds. Next, we're going to run past the zombie that just came through the window and let this police zombie fall over the railing. If you're fast enough, sometimes this zombie up here will also fall over his railing and you won't have to bother with him. But if you aren't fast enough, grab the handgun rounds from behind you where the police officer zombie was just sitting before she reanimated. And then shoot him in the leg in order to get by him. We're going to go all the way upstairs and get some more handgun rounds on this box. Shoot this zombie in the leg to get by him and grab the spade key. Then we're going to turn around and shoot the zombie in the leg again in order to get by him. As you can see, focus shots with the quick army, quick draw army. Uh, it only usually takes one focus shot. We're going to do the same thing for him. I was a little bit high on the stairs, and then Claire didn't want to run for some reason. <laughs> uh, she didn't start sprinting, so I almost got grabbed, but that's really only because uh, my spacing was incorrect. Um... We're going to come into the valve room here and open this locker. The combination is C-A-P. We're going to grab the incendiary rounds from that locker and then from the other locker over there beside it. More incendiary rounds, or flame rounds, would be easier to say. Um, we're going to use the valve and head towards the star's office. Um, we need to grab this blue gunpowder in the locker to our left. More flame rounds on this couch. And we're going to run past the star's locker a little bit to aggro Mr. X. That's so that he will decide where he wants to go, whether it's forward or back, he's a little bit RNG, while we're collecting items, so he will always be headed down the hall where we don't need to go by the time we leave. We're gonna grab the battery, combine it with the detonator, grab the flame rounds off that uh, desk, grab the flashbang on the box behind that, run over here and grab this white gunpowder, combine it with the blue, make more acid rounds, combine those, and then come over here, and there's more handgun rounds next to a note left from Leon unique to the B campaign. Now, as you can see, Mr. X, his RNG decided to go back the way he actually spawned. That door is locked at that end of the hall, though, so even though we got bad RNG, he went back to where he spawned, walked to the locked door, couldn't go through, turned around, and then by the time we were done collecting items, he was on his way out to the West Hall. Um where we just came from and out of our way. So we can come down here. There's no liquor in the hall, so we can run. We're gonna unlock this door and then solve the unicorn metal puzzle, which the combination for B scenario is children, scale, worm. Uh, and then we're gonna head back into the library here. Now, you have to be very fast because Mr. X can hear you shooting guns now that he's spawned. So I like to shoot this standing zombie, the female, with one flame round in order to kill her faster because she's stumbling around as zombies do when they walk. But I like to kill this zombie eating ass with the handgun because he's already like eating ass so he's in a more static position and it's easier to machine gun him with the revolver. You need to try to kill these two zombies before X gets to you. If you have a little bit of extra time you can move these shelves and there's handgun rounds under the shelves. I would recommend trying to move these but if you can't just be careful not to get cut off, because we don't want to go this left-hand way that I just looked at. We want to go back around right, so we don't wake up the fat zombie, who will wake up if you go left. There's a lot going on in this area that you need to be careful with. We're going to run over and grab this knife, and then we're going to juke X by going up the stairs, so we can go to the attic safely and use the uh, detonator on the C4. While he's taking his time to come up here. Uh, there's handgun rounds on this shelf, we're gonna need those. And what we're gonna do is come around here and wait for X to enter the door and bait him to come this direction. Once he's coming this direction, we're gonna place the C4 on the wall, run the opposite way, right here, and then leave. And we're going to go down the ladder and juke him back around the library again, being careful not to go all the way over to the left to wake up that fat zombie. We're gonna take the immediate left, right here, back up the stairs. Just making sure that X actually follows us up the stairs and doesn't try to, like, turn around and climb the ladder. Because if you're too fast, he might do that, as his AI will notice it's the shorter path to you. Now, with the time that it takes X to chase us down by climbing the stairs, we're going to quickly run in here and get the Lady Medallion. Um, the combination for this in B scenario is Ram, Harp, which I don't know why it's taking me a second here. Ram, harp, 
and then bird. So there's the harp in the middle there, and there's the bird. I don't know why that one took me so long. Cursed run. But we're grabbing this uh, medallion, and then we're going to run back out here and make X go right again, like this. If you did this with proper timing, that zombie should not have fallen from the ceiling and woken up. If he does, you can bait him to go right as well, and usually X is going to punch him and stagger him, so he shouldn't be a problem. Climb back down the ladder, and remember, don't wake up the fat zombie for the third time. We're going to actually stick to the right of the spade door here. See, I'm sticking all the way right and being careful near the fat zombie in order to not wake him up for now. Open the spade key door. Uh, and now we have everything we need to be done with RPD-1, which is why I mentioned to do the lion metal early and get those handgun rounds down the hall early. Because you wouldn't have had time with X chasing you. Um, we're just going to put these in here. And I'll take a quick second to explain something that I haven't had a chance to. Uh, in the B scenarios, you have 45s, which I mentioned, as handguns. Uh, Leon gets the M19, Claire gets the Quick Draw Army. Uh, both are different in their own respects, like their main 9mm handguns, but that's kind of the point. The, uh, the main handguns of the game are 9mm, and you do not pick up any 9mm ammo throughout the playthrough. So the reason why we didn't get the upgrade for the JMB and we didn't get the upgrade for the SLS is because we're basically never going to be using the SLS outside of its magnum parts later, using it as a magnum, because you don't actually pick up any 9mm ammo. Um, you can make 9mm ammo by combining blue gunpowders, but we're not going to be doing that either. So I just thought I should get that out of the way. You get 45 rounds around the game instead. Um, and they are stronger, but there's fewer of them. Now, up there, there was some flame rounds in the save room. We grabbed those, then we banked everything in our uh, our box, but we took out two knives. We need we need we kept a knife, took out a knife. We took out a flashbang. We kept our handgun ammo and our handgun, and we ran down the stairs, grabbed a frag grenade, and then we're gonna do something very specific for G1 that I normally don't do in order to save handgun rounds. We're going to knife G1 on consoles. So what you do is you run up here immediately to him. And you try to angle Claire at a 45 degree angle. So she's kind of facing a diagonal an angle when slicing Birkin. And we're just going to knife the ever-living shit out of him. Now, if you stick to his arm, he's going to grab you. This is good. You want him to grab you and then escape using the knife. Once you do this, you're going to knife him again. Same 45 degree angle. Stick to the right arm and he should fall over on one knee. Now keep knifing him, and once he stands back up, I actually did it too long here and almost got hit. Once he stands up, back off, equip the flashbang, and flash him. Then, re-equip the knife, it should auto-equip, run back up to him, and start knifing him at a 45 degree angle again. I got bad luck because he was stuck against this pillar, which actually didn't let me get a good slicing uh, angle. Uh, if you get a good slicing angle, it's better. Once you've knifed him the second time, and he starts attacking again, back off, and just shoot him with the handgun. You can aim for his eye, you can use focus shots if you want. Uh, it uh, Normally, in the other runs, I told you don't use focus shots in order to kill him faster, but since we knifed him, he's going to die pretty fast anyway. The reason we're knifing him as Claire is because she does not have enough handgun rounds with the routing that I'm using in order to kill all of the dogs later safely if we use all our handgun rounds on G1. Uh, Even though G1, as you're gonna see, gets absolutely nuked by Claire's handgun because Claire's handgun does a lot of damage. Uh, this particular revolver, the quick draw, um, it does a lot of damage. Uh, because it's a 45, it already does more damage than the 9mm, and it does even more damage than Leon's M19. It's the strongest handgun in the game, to my knowledge. Um, at the corners of the boss room, there are three dead ends um, that have handgun rounds, and one of the dead ends also has a frag, which you saw me pick up. Pick up that frag and pick up all the handgun rounds. Uh, I actually had way more handgun rounds than I needed, so you might not even need to flashbang him. You might just have to knife him and then let him grab you, escape using the knife, and then continue knifing him till he falls on one knee, continue knifing him, back off, shoot him. And you could still be fine and save a flashbang. But we don't actually need that flashbang, so if you want to use it, you can go ahead. I know it's scary to knife Birkin, but it can be done even on consoles, which I'm going to elaborate on in a second. I just wanted to point out that at the top of the ladder to the right, we did grab a blue gunpowder out of the locker. Um, make sure to grab that. 
Let me elaborate real quick on why there's a difference between console and PC knifing. The knife is tied to frame rate. Its hits are tied to frame rate. The higher your frame rate, the more hits the knife deals, not more damage, specifically more hits, which both makes the knife do more damage, more DPS, because it's hitting more, and it makes it lose durability faster. So on a pro console, or on PC with an unlocked frame rate, the knife can do such extreme damage you can just nuke bosses with it, which is used in speedruns. I am on a regular PS4, and showed the regular PS4 slash Xbox um, One way of killing that boss with the knife. You can still absolutely do it. Um, but you have to supplement with more stun from grenades, um, or more shots from the handgun, rather than just killing him outright with the knife. Regardless, we did that to save ammo, we managed to save ammo, that's the point of doing it. Um, after the cutscene with Sherry, we're gonna run into the firing range, which is on the left-hand side once you enter the basement area from the parking garage. Uh, and we're running into the firing range to grab those incendiary rounds, or those flame rounds. Uh, that we just grabbed, but we're not going to be getting the metal box because again, we're not collecting anything for the JMB, we're not getting the JMB, uh, because we don't have 9mm rounds and the JMB is kind of worthless. Coming into this room, you need to walk because there's liquors, the usual Claire stuff, there's a white gunpowder in a little cart to the right of the door, grab that, and then you just want to stick left against the kennels, uh, just stick a hard left against the kennels, none of the liquors are going to touch you, none of them are going to aggro. Out here, you can run again. Um, we're gonna run into the morgue, and we're gonna open this, uh, particular tray, this particular rack, to get a flash grenade. Um, which sometimes I ignore as Claire, because you don't need it, but we're getting it, because we used an extra one against Birkin. Now, this zombie will wake up early in B campaign, like as soon as you open the rack, rather than grabbing the diamond key. You can still just grab the diamond key after he wakes up and run out. But to be safe, there's a neat little trick where if you line Claire's foot up with that grate that you saw me, looking at on the floor, he won't wake up at all, and you can just grab the key like you saw. If you have to rewind, go ahead. Um, for this part, a lot of people get freaked out by it, They and there's another method to doing it, but the fastest method is just stick left, and you can go up the side of the stairs, um, and as you saw, the liquor was like right next to me, but he didn't aggro, and that's 100% consistent. Coming out of this door, though, you don't want to run because there's another liquor on the ceiling that's meant to jump scare you, and you want to stick to the right wall for this one, because sometimes if you go down the middle, his head is going to touch Claire's, and that'll lag ruin. Um, so we're just sticking lefts and sticking rights, sneaking around liquors, nothing really Might too big going on in the parking that. garage. Um, uh, we're going to come in here and use the diamond key. And there is a grenade launcher stock in this locker, which we need for later. And then there is a uh, white gunpowder right here. I was like, oh, I don't have enough room in my inventory. And then I forgot that I had that blue from earlier that we picked up out of the locker b right before we started walking with Sherry. And we're going to combine that with the white that we got in the liquor room in the kennels. And then that will free up a space to grab the extra white gunpowder. If you're worried about inventory slots, at the box that we reached at the beginning of the parking garage when we were with Sherry, you can drop off a bunch of shit there. Because as you saw, we didn't really need anything in the parking garage. Um, but I just decided not to to save time because it wasn't really necessary. Uh, we're going to run to this box, though, and we are going to sort our inventory. We're dropping off the handgun, the knife, basically fucking everything, <laughs> as you can see. I'm just, I wanted this to sort my inventory, but what we need is... Uh, it's easier to just say what we need. The grenade launcher and the flame rounds. We are not attaching the grenade launcher stock to the grenade launcher yet. Because it makes it take two inventory slots and we want to save slots. Uh, we don't really need it yet. The, what the stock does is increases grenades accuracy. Uh, significantly. Which also increases their range. Um, which we're going to need later for boss fights. But we ran down into the other side of Iron's office in order to get the heart key, or the lover's portrait that contains the heart key. And then we're going to use it on the heart key door and head into RPD-2. Uh, from this point onward, this routing is very, very similar to Claire A. Almost exactly the same, I would say. Uh, aside, with a, aside from a dumb mistake that I'm going to make at the end. Um, we're going to run into this attic room here, and we're going to shoot this zombie with a flame round. Grab the flame rounds off the shelf to our left. Run over and grab the large gear. 
And then walk down this hall and shoot another flame round into this zombie. Open the heart key door back here. Run inside, grab the cube conductor box, and the knife out of this mannequin. Uh, and then we're gonna run back out and open this locker right here next to the door to get a flashbang, which I'm gonna be using to escape the next situation. You can just use the knife, and a lot of people do. But uh, do it at your own risk if you don't if you're doing this no damage or don't want to take a hit, because I've been grabbed once by using the knife. We're gonna stun a zombie, and normally I just let her grab me and stun her with the knife. But one time she teleported to me on the stairs after that and bit me. So I just decided to from now on run down here, throw a flashbang at her, turn the uh, water to the left, and then run right past her because she's stunned, and we keep the knife. Um. The zombie, uh, the other zombie down there, the male zombie, he won't bother you, he takes too long getting up, as long as you're fast anyway. If you have to, you can wait for her to get close to him and you can stun both of them. I just didn't because it saves a minuscule amount of time. We're going to put out the helicopter and then grab these extra handgun rounds on the bench, and that's basically just to make sure we have enough for the dogs. I think we already had enough without picking those up, though. But regardless, we're going to walk in here, aggro Mr. X, and we're not going to be doing the beta punch method in order to get by him because it's risky. So we're just going to lead him back out onto the roof and juke around him the safe way. Just like that. And uh, just to reiterate something from earlier really quick, we don't need um, flashbangs that badly as Claire. So this is the point where I realized I had made a mistake. <laughs> and this is where this all like goes to shit. Um, I was supposed to grab the spade key, which I even forgot to mention, uh, earlier when we were in the box. Um, I was supposed to grab the spade key to open the waiting room door, which we didn't open earlier. You don't have to do that as Leon, and I think I forgot to do it in the Leon B as well. Um, so I had to go down through the, the east side instead. Um, which isn't that big of a deal, except for this door is also locked. Another reason we needed the spade key. So at this point, I'm like, well, fuck, I need to go back now. Um, <laughs> you really want to bring the spade key with you, which I should have mentioned. Um, I knew I made this mistake. I didn't remember exactly how I made it. There's a zombie in this room now. We're going to have to go back through here. And then I was like, the nearest item box is this one. Forgetting that now that we've done all this shit, there's a bunch of zombies in here, and Elliot nearly fucking grabbed me twice, because I'm like, oh god, oh god. Then there was a zombie here, and I'm like, oh shit, I can't go this way. She's gonna grab me. I have to go the other way. And I was like, uh, I guess I'll go back up the stairs. This was literally all just on the spot thinking, because I forgot one key item. So what I ended up doing was we had to run all the way back to Chief Iron's office. So here's a tip. When we leave the Chief Iron's office, bring the grenade launcher, the flame rounds, and the spade key for B scenario. So you don't make this dumb mistake. Even with this mistake, I still made pretty good time, and I'm going to use this mistake as an opportunity to explain something, which uh, should go without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. First of all, you should not be watching this guide step by step and following it. This is intended for you to watch the whole way through and then attempt it yourself or rewatch it while, you know, step by step while doing it. Um, because I make mistakes that I need to explain. I forget things sometimes that I need to explain and there's just a lot of information to convey. Most importantly, it's because you need to know why I'm doing what I'm doing and what I'm saving my ammo for, etc. That is the most important part. Not me making mistakes. Usually, you know, that's on me more than anything. But you shouldn't follow along with this like as you're playing, first of all. And second of all, this is not a speed run. Even though I'm doing things to save time, even though I am doing a few speed run strats in places, this is by far not a speed run. All of the strats that I'm using need to be consistent and pr uh, prevent or avoid damage, because this is a no damage run. So I do a lot of things like bringing Mr. X back out onto the roof and juking around him that you would not do in a speed run. Um, because I am not trying to save all the time in the world like you would in a speed run. That's your main goal, your main focus. I'm trying to avoid damage. That is the primary focus. I'm just doing it within the S plus time ranking, which for B scenario is two hours, and also doing it... Um, without wasting any time, without wasting any open time. So we're finally going to come back and open the spade key door and run through the um, 
the west office here, and we're gonna walk in this room because there are liquors, same as A scenario. Um, and we're gonna open this door with a heart key and grab the, I always call it a lever, and I'm pretty sure it's a jack handle. So just grab the jack handle and the frag on the table. Next, Mr. X is gonna aggro on you and come in here. Now, weirdly enough, for some reason, his AI made him go through the West Hall. You can hear he is actually in West Hall through the club key door like he would be for Leon. He went the wrong way. Normally, he's gonna walk in that room, you're gonna juke him around the, um, the thing. And then you're gonna walk through here. Weirdly enough, again, that liquor aggroed on me for some reason, and I knew I needed to get out of this fucking room fast because X was down the West Hall, which meant he was walking towards this office and was gonna cut me off. And sure enough, he was. That shouldn't happen for you, though. That was just a weird off-beat thing. Uh, the liquor, like I said, also shouldn't aggro. Um, but when we walk back through that office, the west office, we're going to be careful because that zombie that woke up is going to be on one of either side of the office, and you just go around the side that he's not on. So whichever side, left or right, he's not on, you go around it. Now I'm going to take a second to mention these bookshelves. You saw me move them earlier while X was on my tail. Again, this is why you don't follow along with me, because I forgot to explain this. If you didn't get a chance to move those bookshelves, you should probably move them um, before going and getting the jack handle. Because they need to be moved if X is on your ass when you have the jack handle and release that final shelf. In order to move the two shells on the left, you don't need to do all three on the left. It only has to be two of the three if you did it right. We need to move them over by one to the right in order to form a path. But to do that, the one on the far right already had to be pushed over left once, and the one on the and the the ones on the left needed to be pulled over to the right once. So if you didn't already set those up, you're probably going to need to juke X around the library one more time. But you just need to find a way to be able to use the jack handle on those shelves, release them, and then pull them over and make a path. The same as the A scenarios. You should have already played the game, you should know how that works. That's just the safe way to do it. We come up to the clock tower, we bait a hard right into the door. I'm already in the room, obviously, doing the puzzle. Um, there's a zombie right around the corner, and we, I could have popped that zombie with a flame round. Uh, I chose to just bank hard right into the door. You can get away with it, but it's a little bit risky if your timing's off. So you might just want to pop that zombie with a flame round, but we need to be very careful with flame rounds in B scenario as Claire. We're going to run very tight on them. We just solve the gear puzzle. You put the big gear in one spot, take it back out, bring it upstairs, put it up, grab the small gear, put it up there, grab, you know, bring the small gear back down here. You put that down here. But then we're going to go into the back hallway and we're going to grab a large gunpowder off the box way back there like I just did. And we're going to grab this cube conductor box before we leave and don't forget that. Next, we just make, need to make sure that X has gone away that's not going to clutter us. He went back down the left side here. You just need to make sure he's not in front of you. Now, unfortunately, this zombie didn't move, so I had to shoot him anyway. Sometimes that zombie will move down to the left. Uh, and so usually, he'll be out of our way. The first zombie I just shot will move over to the left. The police zombie that was just back there, usually I'll shoot him with the flame round. But because the other one didn't move, I shot the first one with the flame round. And then the police zombie moved out of my way. Uh, so I was able to run by him. But you may have to shoot both of those zombies with flame rounds. Coming back in here, in this locker, there's some more 45 caliber ACP rounds for the quick draw army. And we're going to grab those handgun rounds. Again, just to be safe on how many handgun rounds we have for the dogs. And we're running back into Chief Iron's office now. Um... There is just a lot of mistakes in this run. It, there's already a lot of mistakes in this fucking recording. Uh, but uh, I don't have a lot of free time right now, so I'm just going to make do with what I have. We're mixing the white gunpowder that we got earlier with the large gunpowder we just got in the clock tower to make more acid rounds. And then we're taking out our handgun rounds, the quick draw army, and we're keeping the cube conductor boxes because we're headed to solve the electronic part puzzle, obviously. Uh, I make a mistake with the electronic parts puzzle. Uh, in all of these guides, I've shown the fewest possible moves in order to do these. But for B I didn't have them memorized for Leon A, Leon B, or Claire B. I only have Claire A's memorized, um, ironically enough. So, B, 
basically I had them written down for the other campaigns, but I didn't have Claire B's written down for whatever reason when I did this. Um, so essentially, I was going off of memory of how to do this, and I think I move one in the wrong place. Let me just see the moves that I make here. And by the way, how I would recommend solving this puzzle is just by following my moves, except for, I, th like I said, I get this wrong. So what you're going to have to do is I think I'm just going to mention the one move that I, I made wrong. I'm pretty sure I only made one move wrong in this. We move this one down close over there. Yeah, move that one. I'm trying to see where I made my mistake. We move this one twice. And then we move that. Yep. We move this wire. Yep. That creates the line that we need. Then that one. One, two, three. And that was it if I had just moved the one mistake I made. Watch, I'm going to hit the wrong one. Don't hit that one. The one that I just pressed. Don't hit. Yeah. So don't hit that the one that I pressed. The one after that, the straight line, you can hit that one. And then the last one that I hit was also correct. The two moves that I made wrong was that straight line and then the last one the, at the corner. I believe as long as you don't hit the one that I said don't hit, but the other two you do hit, uh, I believe that is the fewest possible moves for Claire B. But you can look up the solution online. I should have had it written down um, and done it properly. But like I said, I'm going to be re-recording these, so... We're in the Sherry segment now. Uh, you get the block out of the puppet, and then you put the block in the puzzle. You just have to move the first block, so the one all the way on the left, over to the third slot, so two blocks to the right. And then the puzzle, the sides of the blocks are random, like which sides are where when it starts. But if you put the first block in the third slot, all you have to do is turn all of the blocks to match the shapes, and it is automatically completable. Um, no fuss, no muss. So, just go ahead and do that. The Sherry segment is a little bit boring, um, on replay through. There's not going to be a whole lot that's going on. And it's not very hard to get done. Like, you don't get caught easily, or anything like that. So you shouldn't ever lose a run here. <laughs> Again, I'll just uh, take this time to elaborate that while this routing is a little bit shaky, this recording is a little bit shaky, uh, this route will work for you. If you follow this route and just don't make most of the mistakes that I make, this route works perfectly fine for no damage. It doesn't even take that much practice. It's very easy. It's basically just my Claire A route adapted for B. The only thing that could make it safer is if I would have spent extra time getting the machine gun and collecting machine gun ammo, but it's really not necessary. Um, in fact, it's almost better that I've made mistakes in this, because it shows that you can make a lot of mistakes and still meet part-time, far under part-time, in fact, for S-plus rank, still have plenty of ammo, um, and still do it no damage. Like, I did this with tons of mistakes, and still did it no damage. So, if you don't make the same mistakes as me, you're gonna be even better off. Uh, and I didn't practice this that many times. I've run this, like, twice. I didn't have a lot of time to practice any of the campaigns but Claire A. Uh, Claire A is the only one that I ran, like, nine times before recording it. So I knew exactly what I needed to do. Uh, for this segment, you're running away from irons, if it even begs description. Everyone should already know how this works. You run in here after he's chasing you, and we're going to hide right here behind this little, like, shelf. And we're just going to sit here for a it's minute. All over now. Doors locked. We're doing this in a specific way. Like, hiding in specific places just to make it both the fastest and safest, I guess. Although there's really Show no yourself. way to make this unsafe, I guess. I know you're in here. The longer it takes me We're to just going to circle you, around the, the side he's not going. Be. So in this case, it's around to the left. Because he's going around right. And then he's going to move this, like, baby crib in front of him. We're just going to sit right here and watch him do it. I don't know why I turned around, but... He'll turn back around. Sari will go, oh god, oh god. And about at this point, you start circling left again. And we're just going to stick here slowly as he goes around. And then he's going to go, ugh, god damn it. As soon as he says, ugh, god damn it, because he tripped and banged his shin. Um, 
we're just gonna run because he can't hear you. You can sneak if you want, I suppose, as long as you get here fast. Um, but he can't hear you if you run at all. You're never gonna get caught. And then we're just gonna go to this table that I'm hiding on under, crouch under it, and sit here. Because at this point, he cannot actually find you at all. Um, in a speedrun, you can actually walk to the blocks up ahead of me that Sherry's kind of standing at. And there's a spot you can stand in plain sight without even crouching. And he will walk by you and nearly touch you. And he can't see you. He even shines the flashlight on her, and he can't see her. It's some kind of weird bug. But we're not taking the risk. Just in case. Also, when he goes, ah, fuck, you can leave out from under the table and run towards him. And you won't get caught. I was sitting under the table, if I'm being honest, because I was responding to a text message while I was waiting for the Sherry segment to move forward. My girlfriend messaged me, and I was trying to respond while sitting under the table. So, when he says, ah, fuck, you can just walk up or run up behind where he's walking and be closer to the door when the cutscene's over. But at the same time, you don't even really need to. It saves minuscule amounts of time, and we're not trying to speedrun. So, we're just gonna run downstairs, open all the locked doors, go through this pre-set segment. I'm coming in, Sherry. He's gonna bust through the door like this is The Shining. He's gonna call Sherry a bitch. And now we're done the Sherry segment. Thank Lord in heaven. Um... Back to the horrible Claire B run that we're currently doing. So it's going to cut back to 30 minutes earlier. And we already sorted our inventory when we actually came back through. We could have waited until now, but I chose to do it first. That way we're ready to just run straight down to the parking garage. garage excuse me. We don't have to enter the item box again. Um, just wait, asshole. Because we already have what we need. But just to remind you uh, of what you need going down to the parking garage, we want your handgun rounds, all of them, and the quick draw army, your handgun. Of course, also the parking garage key card, but you're going to pick that up in the uh, in the puzzle room. So we're going to be shooting dogs next. The quick draw army. Uh, it's a little bit riskier to use than the JMB, which is what we use in a scenario for this part, because the JMB is 100% accurate, has a 26-round mag by this point, and fires uh, pretty fast. It's not as fast as this, but because it reloads so much faster and has way more ammo, it's a lot safer. X is going to try to sneak up behind us once we use the keycard, and we're just going to... You can go around that police cruiser if you want to be safer, but we're just going to bait him to the right and then go around left. Once the shutter's open about a quarter of the way. Because by the time we run up to it, it'll be open enough for Claire to run under. And we're gonna run up to the street. There's some zombies banging on the fence way back there. In the corner. And we're gonna run up close to the zombies in order to get them to drop the fence door down. And then we're gonna turn around, run around this ACP, and then keep going and run around this Hummer, or Jeep. I don't know why I said Hummer. SUV, whatever the fuck it is. Um, you're gonna run around that, and then we're gonna find a clear path. If you don't have a clear path, run something around some more, just be careful of the zombies. I wouldn't recommend stopping for a leg shot. We do in a speed run. But again, it's risky because if you stop for too long or take too long to shoot them or they don't stun on the first shot, blah, 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 X can catch up to you and punch you in the back of the head. And I wouldn't recommend that. So, tried it. Cannot recommend. Zero out of five. We're going to go ahead and kill this uh, zombie here at the bottom of the stairs. You can just blow her leg off, but... So I've never seen this before. She fell through the side of the stairs. And she wasn't supposed to be dead. She only died once, so she should have still been alive, but I don't think she could get back up because she was stuck. So, interesting glitch. But uh, we're going to jump over this dumpster and shoot this first dog. You just want to try to use focus shots and unload on them. Remember, you can fire very fast, so be careful with your shooting. We're going to run through this fence here and try to get the dog to jump on top of that white car. If he doesn't, I'm going to back up in here to be safe and let him run around and shoot him when he comes to the door. Claire is going to freak the hell out and scream. She's telling a dog to step back. Even if it uh, weren't a zombie, I don't think that would work. Um, 
And then we're going to walk around the, the white car and take some pot shots at this dog. Again, if you miss, I would recommend hurrying back to the gate again, quickly like a bunny, in order to cheese him. Because uh, we don't want to fuck around with dogs. You cannot afford to fuck around with dogs with this handgun because it reloads so slow that you don't have time to reload. So we're going to try to shoot these dogs. Sometimes they're going to try to climb the fence or you're going to have to reload and they won't be dead. Well, my recommendation is if you have to reload, turn around and go back through the fence door that we came in from and camp that door. So they have to climb over two fences to get to you and just kind of run back in and out of that door in order to cheese the dogs if you run out of bullets and need to reload. There's one more dog that we just shot there that you have to shoot before leaving that basketball court. And then we're going to come into the train, or train, I meant bus. And we're going to shoot uh, this zombie and grab the frag grenade to the right. Uh, we need to kill this zombie because we're going to try to get this dog to be to play nice. Claire is again freaking out about the dog that actually can't get to you when you're in this bus. I'm making sure this zombie's dead. And then normally this dog is going to be on the other side of the bus, like on the outside. And he actually jumped over the road stop early and came over here. So I normally what I would do is I would run back outside the bus to this road stop and run like a few feet down from it and make him jump over it and then shoot him when he jumps over. But he had already decided to jump over it, so I decided to cheese him in the bus by wasting a little bit of extra time and just gunning him whenever he passed by. Uh, and uh, we're done with the handgun after this. So as you can see, I actually had way more rounds than I needed. You could have shot G1 with more rounds and used less knife or not used the flashbang. You could have shot, you could have ended up shooting zombies more with rounds, but we only had about 27 to play with. So you still want to be careful. Um, but I, th that's the whole reason I knifed G1 because when I didn't knife G1, I cut that way too close. I was down to like five handgun rounds at the end of this section and that's just not acceptable for safe strats. We're gonna run in here, skip the cutscene. Not much happens during this little walking segment, except for a cutscene break. Uh, if you do this next section fast enough, um, the cutscene will break and Claire will repeat dialogue lines afterwards, which you're gonna see happen. Uh, I'll mention what I'm doing real fast on the stairs here. You've probably been seeing me aim on stairs for a brief period. Uh, that is called stair skating, and it is done by aiming and then letting go of the aim button very quickly because uh, after lowering the weapon on stairs when Leon and A are sprinting they gain a slight speed boost that is faster than their actual running animation on the stairs so by stair skating we go just a little bit faster it doesn't save too much time over the course of the entire run but there's nothing else to do on stairs anyway and right there you might have been able to hear Claire going go 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 in the background of me skipping that cutscene and see Sherry's her. Don't stop! The dialogue line's gonna repeat. We're gonna run in this room here, and we're gonna pick up the magnum rounds on the table to the left, and then we're gonna pull out a flash grenade out of the item box. Uh, don't forget the flash grenade. It helps with this part. We're gonna drop down into the sewers now. Fun part of the game. We're coming up on our first split for the recording, and our first save. Uh, on the sewage to the left, there is a white gunpowder, don't forget that. And then we're just gonna run up here. Don't gotta worry about a G adult here, unlike Leon. Um, the reason we grabbed the flash is just to circumvent this room easily. You could just use handgun bullets if you have some left over and get leg suns, but again, Claire doesn't really need flashbangs like Leon does. She can actually use them as defense items slash strategically, unlike Leon who has to save them for Super Tyrant. So I just opt to use one here. We pop in this room and just throw it once the door is open. It's going to stun two zombies to the right. This one won't be stunned, but you can just run behind him, grab the in flame round that's on the chair there, and then we just run over and drop down here, and those zombies will stay stunned long enough that you can just do this. Um, so you don't got to worry about it. I'm going to run over to the box, put away everything. Um, we're going to pull out the grenade launcher again. Still not combining it with the stock yet, though. Um, we need to save the inventory space. And we're going to pull out the flame rounds. One stack. Um, and I'm going to lower this bridge early, and I think, I think I'm going to turn around and save. Yeah. I just wanted the bridge to already be down whenever I load it back in after checking the footage. 
We're gonna grab these zinc ribbons and make the first split. So, uh, that was part one. I'm gonna go ahead and go get working on part two, and we'll pick it up there.